Hello everyone, today we are playing Root, Spies and Saboteurs. Uh, we are with the, our crew back as we try to find the mysteries of the woodlands. Last time uh, we were doing a job for a, a tax collector of our people, at the same time that we stumble into the affairs that are going on, on in the Wind Gap Refuge and the mysterious threat of the poisoned supplies that has been to tormenting the clearing. Following, uh, following a trail, uh, our heroes, uh, well, vagabonds, uh, they follow the trail to a place that seems to have been bought on, on, the, on this alleged rebellion that has been fermented, that they were, they were told it's just a con artist that is trying to use the, the hope of freedom to exploit people. They intercepted the place and they found out uh, who is working for who, as well as the guards that betrayed the area. Following that trail, they are set to visit the hideout of the Red Robin. This game is a game of the gauntlet. You can find about the gauntlet on the links below. We're going to be using uh, the following safety tools. We're going to be using the X card. So any moment there is something that uh, you don't want to see on the game, you just point out what it is. You don't have to go into details or explanations. Just point out what it is and use the X card and we're going to retcon that. We also be using script change. So basically, if you want to create a scene with more details, but you want to be careful, we can fast forward certain parts, we can pause and discuss the subject matter, we can rewind and replay a scene on a more comfortable way. And we also have lines and veils, which is its own tab on the character keeper. And uh, we are keeping it as an open document uh, that, you know, any time there's something that you don't want to deal with, you can just add it as a line. If you still want it to be acknowledged as part of the game, but you don't want to play to it, you just want it, you know, to there's be a change in the scene or fade to black or on the background, uh, whenever that subject is involved, you just mark it as a veil. It is also an open table, so it's at any moment, for some reason, you need to leave. That will be more. That will be no problem. And we're gonna start by introducing ourselves and our characters. Let's go in the order of the screen. Introduce your characters and the most awesome thing that they did last session. Let's start with Toby. Uh, hi, I'm Toby, and my character is a squirrel called Fluff, um, using the Ranger playbook. Uh, and what's the most awesome thing that Fluff... I'm not sure about awesome, but the most memorable thing for me that Fluff did last session uh, was track down a fox and then murder her in cold blood and tie her body to a tree to point the direction for the rest of the party to go which uh, surprised me, <laughs> at least. It's nice when your character surprises yourself. Yeah. And Richard, why don't you just yourself and your character? Hello, I'm Richard, uh, and my character is Nail. They are a fox. Um, they uh, are a little bit scatterbrained. Um, but they have traveled from far away with their, uh, and, and have their daughter, uh, was it wood? Timber. Timber. Haha. -ha. Yeah. So timber and nail, um, uh, go around all, all over the, the forest and, um, and make stuff. And the greatest thing I did last, last session was, uh, well, I made some stuff. I, I made a popcorn grenade. And that uh, went down very well. And you still have a second one. Uh, next, uh, Rob, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? 
Hi, I'm Rob. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Connor, uh, who is an owl uh, uh, arbiter, I think. Yeah, the playbook is the arbiter. Uh, and he is a, a, a deserter from the Iri dynasty uh, who uh, disagreed with the orders he was given, so uh, he left. Uh, and the coolest thing he did last week was bring down the house or the barn uh, partially uh, while uh, try trying to uh, uh, sur surprise attack the, the people that were inside it. Okay. So we get back to Toby. And... Well, Fluff is back on the chase, once again, operating alone. What is... <laughs> what is coming to Fluff's mind as they race through the, to the forest? As their thoughts go back to the last time in which they were running through the forest. Fluff is a very excitable little fellow, and he loves this. Uh, he's super keen. He uh, he's always excited to prove himself and to get to feel like he's part of the action and to prove his worth to his companions. And uh, this is exactly how he feels right now. That he's got the wind in his tail. He's uh, he's dashing through the forest. Nobody else is with him. He's on his own. Um, and when he sees his friends again, he's going to be so proud of what he's done. He's really excited about it. And the fact that he's just murdered a fox in cold blood doesn't even cross his mind. There's something that gives Fluff a reason to pause. Bending over, over the trail of the guards, it, there is a, a new scent, a scent that uh, that they have not smelled for a while. The scent of cat, and among the the broken, the broken twigs and branches of a nearby bush yeah there is this smell of cat clinging to how, how does cat smells to fluff mm, a kind of sour bitter smell immediately um i think it smells kind of fluff's reaction is it, it kind of crude and uh because Fluff comes from a family that's not upper class, but that has always served the aristocracy, right? Served the Airy. And um, the cats have always, he's always been taught the cats are kind of lower class, uh, crude, dirty creatures. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And kind of brutal. And the reason they're violent is just it's in their nature to be violent and they haven't got the kind of finesse that they should have. Um, and that's his immediate reaction as soon as he smells this, like, ugh, ugh. But um, this this isn't a cat area. Well, this isn't a cat area, right? I was going to say, although, of course, one thing we established last time is that Fluff's lost, so who knows where he's run to. Yeah, this kind of hints that you are getting more close to Underleaf than you expected. Mm. Well, have I lost the trail? No, you are still following the trail. It was just something that left you upset. Interesting. If I stop to, to sniff out what's going on, will I lose the trail? Is that a risk? Have I got uh, time? To... I would say that seems like the kind of hard move I could lose on you. Yeah, yeah, all right. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me just say that uh, it will not be a dead end. So no. I will okay. get you on something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at my moves. Uh, 
the tent situation is not really um, not really appropriate because it's not, and also the answer, the questions don't really make sense. <sighs> is this just one isolated smell of cat, or is it more than I'm just entering a cat area? Uh, it smells like there ha there was a a cat around the forest not that long ago. Mm. I wonder how far behind me my companions are. I think I'm going to um, I'm going to keep on the tail of the fox because that's the that's the job. But I wouldn't mind leaving a marker here so I can find it again. Also, that anyone who's following me might be able to find. I don't have a convenient dead body lying around to to mark the the scent. <laughs> Uh, well, as if there is a cat around, they may also find mm. that. Mm, true. Maybe I'll just try to remember a landmark. Is there a particular, uh, like a distinctive tree nearby or a clearing, anything like that? Why don't you trust fate on that? To okay. See if there is something convenient around here. Sounds good. So I roll with luck. Yeah. Although, oh, yes, I remember all my stats are one. That's very handy. Okay. Uh, two plus one. Uh, there we go. I have seven, eight. Okay. So uh, I guess the obvious question is it's going to cost you something? So you're probably going to have to mark the K to do it. How uh, There is a convenient space, and you're going to need to leave something behind. So why, why don't you describe me what is the convenient stuff that you find? OK, I think there's a particularly distinctive colored um, mushrooms or toadstools around the base of the tree just nearby. Um, but the problem is I'm going to have to, I think the, these are, I've seen a few of those as I've, I've been going and I'm going to have to mark these in some way. So perhaps I, I, I note the color of the mushrooms and then in the, in the bark behind that, using the tip of my sword, I carve a little, maybe a, a sketch of a cat, like a very crude cat face into the bark. But in doing so, I, maybe I get a chip off the end of my blade. It's not designed for that. So perhaps that's what that's what the decay is. Mm, so you want to mark the decay on the blade and not on the on your general decay, right? I think that makes sense story wise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to work out how to do that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, sure. Okay. Ah, but a special thing about the fo the fox folk landslide is that I ignore the first box of decay each scene. <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> that's convenient. Yep. Very handy. <laughs> Okay, so changing scene, uh, we get to the other two in the down, following after the trail. So you are trying to travel through the forest. So uh, traveling, uh, the travel move is based on your uh, exhaustion. So. Uh, Keep on is missing where the travel move is because it's in a weird space. There it is. So when you're doing a travel move between forests, you collectively decide how much resources you want to mark. So on the forest, you travel with the K. So each of you decides how much the K you get. If you lose less the K than your number of uh, the group members, so two, you're gonna roll with minus one. If you roll, uh, if you spend the same the K as the size of the group, uh, you can uh, you roll with plus zero, and then for each extra decay that you spend on traveling, you get plus one to the roll. So how many uh, how how much decay is 
Nail and Connor willing to spend on traveling? I'll spend one if you spend one. I was about to say the same thing. That's good then. So you're going to roll with plus zero. So which of you wants to do it? Not it. <laughs> Can I get the link, sorry, to the... Um, the roll thank you there we go beautiful so with plus zero reroll oh well that'll be a five Oops. Um, okay, okay. So which of the two of you is uh, uh, he's, uh, scouting ahead? Uh, I think... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I think you might be. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, uh, having been a soldier, I probably was trained in tracking. So, so I think maybe I'm taking the lead there. Mm -hmm. So, what is the one thing that Connor has been told about bears? I think uh, Connor has been told that uh, bears live in uh, li live in the that they're able to. Uh, construct their own shelter uh, even though they're assumed to be uh, wild creatures and now what does the massive shelter of a bear looks like now that you have stumbled upon one I think it's um, I think they've pushed on saplings um, pushed two, three or four saplings kind of down into the same point and then tied the tops of them. So they're still in the ground, but it, they've tied the tops of them together somehow. So it's this this kind of looming cage. Of, of trees growing out of the ground and then coming to a point with all the foliage creating a, a, a roof. So you see the bones of countless woodland critters as well as the uniforms of people from Volt, the Yuri and the Marquisat. And the forest is eerily silent around this place. There's not sound at all. Even the wind seems somehow shy around this place. That only lets the smell fester even more. But there seems to be no bear here. What do you do? I honestly think um, I, I barely noticed the, that I'm in a bear encampment. That uh, I actually kind of rummaging through the bones, trying to find some some ones that I can use. You know, some good ones to the pointy. Um, uh, you know, always on the lookout for some good uh, materials. Uh, 
when don't you give me a trust fate role? Trusting fate, and that's a oh, 13. What did you get? A 13. You rummage through the bones, and you see, uh, you see a silver locket uh, that's uh, the silver seems. Uh, dull and worn as what would happen after being subjected to stomach acid. But uh, you recognize it as a silver necklace and there is the, the sigil of the Marquis head on it. And another smaller sigil, which you don't immediately recognize, but must be from one of the nobles of the Marquis head. And there seems to be a painting of of uh, an elegant cat inside of it the the silver locket you realize is worth uh three decay boxes i should take it i'll take it okay what happens next and then I think I may um, realize that I'm in a place of death that is covered in bones, and that's not necessarily a nice place to be, and, uh, and move on. And Connor, what are you doing as Nell is palunking through bones? Uh, Connor uh, has his... A great sword drawn, and is is just uh, uh, basically covering nails as they're rooting around and uh, rooting around, uh, <laughs> and uh, is sort of like making fluttering motions with it, with uh, one wing, like be able to go. Come on. you are able to leave the place and it seems like uh, you were lucky for now connor you know that you are being observed you are being tracked and you know that you left your smell on the beer's den and you can tell that the beer is looking for you and we uh... get Huh? I probably, I probably try and uh, cross a river. Find, find a route that uh, crosses the river uh, on our way to try and get rid of the scent. Yeah, you do that, and that's when you realize that uh, the river that separates uh, the separates the halves of the forest closer to two clearings and also putting you closer to Underleaf. Which you have no idea if it's good or bad, but well, it's the direction that uh, Fluff suggested. So we go back to Fluff. And Fluff, you found uh, what you suspect to be the Red Robin a camp. You can see a dozen of people around. Uh, they seem to be uh, well equipped. Uh, they seem to be. You saw them around, you know, lower class criminals, uh, the scam with wheel tended weapons and uh, uh, poor hygiene. Uh, you see their sort around. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to work with them, but you recognize them. They are the sort. 
the only ones that are on semi-decent state are exactly the four wards that defected to the band. But yeah, it's a small bandit band. Uh, they seem to be camped near a spring. They have some crude houses on top of trees. You can make up three of them. And there seems to be a small storage uh, shed in between the three houses. And there is a massive campfire where around which many of them are. If Red Robin is on this camp, you still have not seen it. Hmm. And this is in the forest. This is this, I haven't made it to another clearing. No. This is in the middle of the forest. This is the, the campsite of these people that you found. You found their base of operations. What time of day is it? Is it still? Uh, no, no, it's uh, down. Mm. Okay. Um, I've got so I approach along the tree branches as squirrels do, um, and so I'm looking down at this from the overhanging branch of a tree. I don't know, fifty paces away. Um, are there any? Uh, so I, I'm going to look for a a guard or anybody really who who might be a bit separate from the main camp, who might be wandering out on patrol or going to fetch some water from the spring, or maybe that I can kind of ambush individually and find out what's going on. Okay, it looks to me like you are attempting a roguish feat. So let's roll that to see how this attempt goes. Okay. I have a move about this. When I attempt roguish feats for relying on stealth, I can mark exhaustion to choose one fewer from the list. Would you say that, that applies? Yeah. So if you roll poorly, or even if you roll well, you can then lose that if you don't like the options. Yeah, OK. So I have rolled uh, a 3 plus 1 is 4. So yeah. Uh, yeah. OK. <laughs> It's actually much worse because then you yeah. it just does not work. Yeah, no help at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that uh, you found uh, one of the people on patrol, and they seem to be uh, they seem to be a dog, uh, a Shiba Inu. And they seem to be, they have, they seem to be ready to fall asleep at any moment. They seem to, they took the last turn. And they seem like a, a, an easy prey. But <laughs> some of your cat scent must have clung to it. Because as soon as you approach, uh, he immediately jumps out to an alert position and sees you. Uh, the thing is, because you don't look particularly in your species, and they have got new people, they seem to be processing for one second if they recognize you or not. What do you do? Uh, shit. Um, I... I think... Uh, okay. I am going to um, stroll confidently out of the shadow of the tree that I was trying to hide in, and I'm going to say, hello there. Oh. Are you a new one? You don't look like a guard. I seem to have taken a wrong turn. I was just uh, I was just traveling to see some of my friends in the the uh, the, the the nearby clearing and uh, and here I am. Oh, you were a spy and uh, he's reaching for the sword. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm uh, no, I'm just an innocent trader. So, I guess you are trying to kick them. So let's see how that goes. Trick an NPC, roll with cunning. Okay, that I'll just be adding one again. I have an 
eight, nine. So I can, oh, they can choose one option, okay. They seem to be quite impressed by the option, uh, by the suggestion that they had a trader among them. And he approaches you, oh, so what, what are you selling? I have some silver on me and nowhere to spend it. And I really could lose like uh, lose a new shirt. And they seem to be dropping their guard and approaching you. So you're going to get plus one forward on anything against them. Okay. Well, uh, actually, I was um, I was sent to 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 um, to take some of these rare mushrooms in the forest that you, all around here, uh, and uh, and take them to the nearest clearing. And and um, I'm told that the cats love these mushrooms, and I'm just an innocent trader. So I gathered a few mushrooms, um, left them back there in the clearing, and uh, they're very tasty. What are you trying to get from this? Um, I suppose my next move would be to suggest to him that we that he um, that I've got these delicious mushrooms that I've gathered, and perhaps his friends might want some, and he can let me into the camp, and I can set up a stall there and sell him some mushrooms. Okay. Do me a persuade. Yeah. Okay, so the, the promise is, is the mushrooms, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's that's why because I was like, mm, this is a lie, but there is a promise element involved with this. So. It's a lie, but there's mushrooms involved. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, um, uh, this is my only stat that's not one; it's minus one. So, but you get plus one on it. So. Oh yes. So I have a. So yes, I rolled an eight. So that's seven. So that's eight again. Yeah, they're not that sure, and say. Well, that's very interesting, but I cannot decide that. How about that? Uh, how about you go back into the woods and I'll be talking with the boss and you show up later and then we can say if uh, it's okay or not. How about uh, that? Well, 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 see, the thing is, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Because the thing is, these mushrooms are very tasty, and there's only a few of them left because I've sold so many to all the other people in the forest that there's only a few left. And if you go and tell everybody, well, then there'll be none left for you. But if you just step this way, I'll show you. I know uh, you're to know. Sure. Uh, maybe this is a bad idea. Also, I'm starving. I think I'll go get some breakfast and sleep instead. If you're starving, you want mushrooms. What are the what are the what's the breakfast here like? It's just dried paste and walnut and stale bread. But you look like a dog with a healthy appetite. Have you ever tasted roasted mushrooms at dawn? <sighs> Fine, I'll wait here for your mushrooms. Well, if I bring them here, everyone will see. But just. Take a few. Look, just just over there, just over there, and I'm pointing back into just like a dark corner behind the tree that I popped out from. Uh, okay, sure. Just let me get someone here to take my shift instead. Hey, Belmir! He shouts out, and uh, a goat turns around. <laughs> <laughs> Come take my spot. I have to go somewhere else. And he follows you, but uh, he left this goat man there. Uh, okay. I uh, didn't think about my next move just yet. Um. I guess I'm. I'll try and. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I lead you into this little dark corner uh, near the camp. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I should just come clean at this point and and, and um, can I f try and figure him out? Sure. I want to know whether, whether 
Yeah. Okay. I'm going to roll and see what, see if I can ask the questions. Okay. Uh, oh, it's charm again. Of course it is. Damn it. All right. That's a six. So that's a five. So you get the impression that uh, they are not here for the rebellion and they are part of the con. So they cross their arms and say, so there's no mushrooms, you are no spy, and but you are also not part of the so-called rebellion. I don't think you believe about the Red Robin, do you? Okay, look, I'll come clean. Me and my friends, and my friends are right behind me. They'll be here any minute now. Just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Me and my friends are. Um, see, we've got a we've got a mission, and um, we're trying to find this red robin and figure out what's going on. And we could really do with. I mean, as you can see, look, look I've got the I've got the brains. Uh, and my friends behind me can back me up, but we really need someone with a bit of brawn and uh, basically just like a good, strong, all-round fighter to join our group to help take down the Red Robin. And 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 we're expecting. I mean, our employer is has promised us a lot of good stuff. And I took one look at you, and I thought, "There's a dog who knows which side his bread is buttered on." You know, I could just kill you here. The problem is that would not get anything to me. I would fight you. I'll probably win, but I'll probably get hurt on the process. Completely See, this unnecessary. Is I mean. this, is, this is the exactly the kind of intelligent thinking that we're looking for. Yeah, but uh, on the same case, I can just let you go ahead and wait. And once you, you and your friends, and he seems still suspicious about that, once you come here and you are exhausted for dealing with the Red Robin, why don't I just kill you then? What's in for me to be along with your plan? I lean forward and look in his eyes and I say, do me a favor, look up into the sky for a moment. What do you see? Is that some kind of riddle? I'm too tired for riddles. If you look overhead, you will see half a dozen crows circling. Look over there, a couple of squirrels running through the branches. Behind me, if you listen carefully, you'll hear the footsteps of a fox. These are my friends. We are going to win this battle, and your reward is to be on the winning side. Okay, I'll bite. So, suppose you're not Albark, that you actually have a force enough to take uh, the dozen people here, plus the other people with uh, Red Robin. Then, how can I trust you that you don't just kill me? See, that's a very good question. This is the kind of clever thinking that's exactly what we need. <sighs> to be honest, you're far cleverer than I am. Why don't you answer that question for me? Show me just how bright you are. I can get you to Red Robin. You will never get close to him without me. All right, then. So what do we need to do? do what i need is half well i'll have to make representations to my friends and i glance yeah. up again meaningfully at the sky and hope that there's a couple of crows circling overhead at the moment i say it well that's up with you and your friends but on my part as far as i can see 
You can kill us, but get nowhere close to Red Robin, or you can avoid all the trouble and get to Red Robin and get half of the, of the reward. Which, again, mm. half of nothing is one thing, half of an actual reward. Now that we are talking. You're a clever... What's your name? Reef. Reef. You're a clever, clever dog. I would never have thought of that. All this math stuff, half of nothing and double nothing, it's beyond me. <sighs> All right, then, it's a deal. Well, good. How about this? Nobody will expect me to be doing anything I until tonight and i know where red robin meets with the rebels so how about by twilight we meet on this very same place you meet where sorry you broke up a bit on this very same place right here yeah it's a deal So we get to the others as they are in the view with uh, Fluff. You are still unsure if the bear is following you or not. You are no. pretty sure that uh, you are pretty sure that the, the trick with the stream worked, that you are not leaving a trail, but you are also afraid that the, the bear had already caught sight of you before, because. You can see sometimes at the distance the tree is moving apart as if something massive is, is dropped. So you manage to find Fluff's, uh, Fluff's trail and you rendezvous with Fluff. So how, is, how has been Fluff keeping themselves busy as they wait? Uh, sharpening the long sword. And maybe collecting a few bits and pieces for arrows for the bow. Okay. So, what do you do? See with this, uh, how do you approach Fluff? I remind you that uh, you don't get much of the intel that they got from the fox, and you also don't know what they've been doing during the night. But you saw the bodies that he left behind. Hmm. I'm gonna scar up. Fluff, Fluff, is that you? Yeah. Oh, thank God you're here. Ah, it's been so exciting. I've done so much stuff. It's so cool. Just keep your voice down. Yeah, we found the fox you killed. Uh, made it here. So, all we have to do is wait until twilight and there's this dog called riff who's going to meet us and take us straight to the the red robin and it's all going to be brilliant oh good that makes it easy where's connor he's scouting he's flying around ah uh, cool <laughs> Did we lose Rob? I think so. Yeah. Oh, Definitely yeah. Uh, that's good for a five minutes break. We are already on the hour anyway. So let's take five. Sure.
Back. Welcome back. Hello. Welcome back. So, Fleft just informed you of their encounter, what they found out, and you, you're going to have the best part of the day still ahead of you, and you are not quite sure if you have something following you or not. Uh, I would have been scouting around to see if there were any signs of the bear tracking us still. Okay, so give me a read a, a, a read a tense situation. Okay, so that is is that cunning or cunning? Yeah. So plus one. Two and no, what, what are you doing? Okay, roll. So it's a four and a five plus one, ten. Good, so you can ask three questions. Okay, uh, so first question. Uh, who or what is the biggest threat? You can see uh, you can see the trees going around, bending and moving as something massive is going on. But you can observe that the pattern is a bit erratic. Uh, they might have followed you at some point, but now they know that you should be somewhere but have no trail. So they, they are not the biggest threat, really. Uh, what you realize is that uh, from your uh, position is that uh, there is uh, another campsite uh, not very far away from there. It's basically on the other side of the spring and you can see uh, you can see tents and uh, and the campfire. That the that has been put off recently, and you figure out that this, considering the size of that camp, uh, whoever is behind it is the biggest threat. Not the bear, not the the bandits that work for the Red Robin. 
Okay. Uh, who is in control here? Uh, you realize that uh, you have, uh, as you suspected, uh, you have crossed into territory of the Marquisad. And there is a, a militia that seems to have gathered of, uh, of the people armed, uh, of the people of Underleaf armed by the Marquisad, that uh, they seem to be putting justice on their own hands and they assemble the ragtag group to take down the Red Robin, despite whatever the authorities may say. And they are the ones in control of the region. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> what should I be on the lookout for? Uh, you are aware that uh, if, the, if the Red Robin is here, still, they must be on a very tense, delicate, desperate situation. So they're probably going to make something stupid or they will be perhaps uh, willing to listen to things that they will otherwise not consider. <clears throat> okay, I will make my way back to where the others are. Okay. Hi, 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 hi. I'm so pleased to see you. There's a Marquisette camp not far away. Looks like the uh, militia from this clearing are looking for the Red Robin as well. Uh, could work to our advantage, could not. Yo, yeah, I spelled something. I had an idea. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Mm. Is that why you drew a cat? Yeah, you found it. Yeah, yeah. You guys are so smart. So, we got a plan? Yeah, we've got a way to go and see the Red Robin. Trusting a dog that we barely know. I feel like we have an understanding. <clears throat> you see, I'm afraid that he understands you. I don't I have no idea what you mean. Well, Connor, uh, was there anything you saw from above that we might need to know? Uh, there is something moving around in the trees, but it doesn't know where we are right now. Something like what kind of something? Can't say for sure, but Maybe a bear. A bear? Oh, we just went through a bear house, didn't we? Hmm? We did walk through a bear's house, didn't we? Mm hmm What? You guys? What? What? We had it all worked out. I had the plan all sorted. I made a friend. I got it all worked out. You guys brought a bear here. Shh. Well, so we now we've got... We've got bandits, we've got cats, and we've got a bear. Hmm. <sighs> Wait, what if we can use the bear to get rid of the bandits? <laughs> That's a risky idea, but if you have a way of doing it... And then well, it'd, be, the cat? It, it'd be simple enough that you just sh throw something at the bear until they see us, and then run through the bandit camp. Mm. 
why don't we use the bear to take care of the cats? And then we can go and take care of the bandits. You don't need to make trouble with the Marcus out right now. The Marcus had our trouble. We're working for the Marcus Oh, yeah. <laughs> A minor detail. Well, actually, speaking of which, if we just walk up to the cats and tell them that we're here to fix the Red Robin issue, maybe they'll help us. Yeah. Fluff spits on the ground. Hmm. Hey, you said you'd be cool. <sighs> I'm cool, but I'd rather not get more involved with these scum than we need to. Well, what if then you can be a lookout while we go talk to the cats? <laughs> Fluff tries to stomp off, but it's hard to stomp off in a sulk when you're also climbing a tree. So I think we're going to loop around the bandit camp and enter the cat camp. Is there a vantage point from which Fluff can watch what's going on and maybe ideally draw a longbow bead on his friends, at least until they reach the camp? Yes, with that issue. So how are the others approaching it under the watchful gaze of Fluff? I think we're legitimately just walking, walking in. We know that we're in the right, and we'll probably get some swords drawn to our faces, but uh, we will be able to figure this out. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? So you approach the the camp, and it, there is. The tents seem to be standard Marquisite issue. Uh, there is a banner of the Marquisite. But there's really only a single cat among them. Uh, it seems to be an old veteran missing one ear and one eye. Uh, and the rest of them seem to be farmers. Most of them rabbits, a few foxes, a few mice. Uh, there's an otter among them and two crows. Uh, and again, they look more like Melissa. All they have is some spear. Some of them have padded armor. Not much else. And it's a group of 30 of them. Uh, let's see what is their immediate uh, reaction. So why don't you roll, each of you roll your, uh, uh, your prestige with the Marquisade. So that will be 2d6 plus your modifier. I think it's plus zero for both of you. Yep. So that's a uh, seven. Uh, mine is minus one. Uh, which makes it six. Oh. Wait, really? I thought you did not feel enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, do uh, I have to fill in all three or? Yeah, you need to fill okay. all of them. Then yeah, it's just seven. Okay, so. So this does not seem to be immediate recognition uh, and the camp is suspicious of you, but because you approached them openly, uh, that you know, that's pretty much half of the validation that you belong there. 
and nobody seems to recognize you in particular for good or for ill and the veteran presents themselves my name is lieutenant scruffles and i'm responsible for training the the voluntary forces of Enderleaf. who are the two of you Uh, just quickly, what was the name of the tax collector that sent us? Uh, we never established it, so what is the name of the tax uh, collector that uh, sent you? Perry. Perry. So I think well, I'll wander up. Hello. Um, I, I understand it that you're our reinforcements? Reinforcements? Yes, in a way, we are padding out our numbers with the voluntaries. After all, it's we are defending their homes, and everyone wants to do their part to respond to the threat of the Eri. So yes, we are reinforcements of sort. Wonderful, because we're here to um, to fix the problems that have been plaguing this area, and we were told that you'd be here to help us. Oh, so. How so? Well, we have to deal with the Red Robin threat. And they seem to narrow their eyes and say, the Red Robin, you say, well, yes, we are also seeking to deal with the Red Robin. They have exploited the misplaced resentment of people, yes. And uh, everyone here present has a bone to pick with them. Well, I assume that's why you were camped here. You know they're just there. Oh, we know there is a camp there. And unfortunately, we probably have scared him off. He is of the slippery sort. I doubt that he is on that camp. Yes, well, we could use it as a training exercise. Go and take on the, the guards and uh, weaken the, the position of the Red Robin. What is your name? I'm Nail. Nail, these people have entrusted their lives to me. And the Red Robin has already taken so much of them. The last thing that I want to do is to ask them to throw their lives away for that without a point. You don't consider a striking a terrible blow to the Red Robin's uh, organization uh, worth anything? We are dealing with a con artist. As long as there is a Red Robin, there will be an organization. There will be people getting hurt. I would consider that if we were wrapping up business after we got Red Robin. Well then, it seems our coming here has been not very helpful. Is there anything you can do? Well, we are on an impasse now. Now tell me, what is your beef with Red Robin? <clears throat> The Marquisad has hired us to get rid of it. Who on the Marquisad? I believe the chap was called Perry. He was a tax oh. collector from down south. Oh. Perry. Hmm. And uh, the lieutenant looks at both of you. 
Well, he certainly must have seen something on you to believe that you could deal with this delicate matter. I admit, I did not put much credit on him when he said that he was going to address the situation. But, uh, well, you seem to be efficient, at least. Well, I mean, we got here this morning, yesterday morning, I suppose. It's just gone morning again. Yeah, and we've already found the, this camp, and you seem to have uh, scared him off, so at least you do his help. Hmm. All right. I'll listen to you. What is your plan? So, we found a bear. And also, we've convinced one of the bandits to defect. So they'll give us all the information we need if we can take care of the other bandits. And the best way to do that would be either with your forces or with the bear. Now, we didn't want to bring a bear that close to our friends, but we can if we need to. A bear could probably take out both my militiamen and the camp. I will not advise that. Exactly. One. So if you give us a hand, we won't have to do that. <laughs> so how much do you trust this defector? Not very much, but he's promised to help. We can take them in and... I still have friends in the in the Baron's forces, and I can get a pardon signed by the Baron of Underleaf for these bandits. Will that be helpful for you in any way? Well, I believe payments already been organized, but that will definitely go a long way. Good. That will take me no effort at all, and I'll be glad to help with it. Anything else? Again, I would prefer not to fight, at least a fight that would for sure cost lives. Okay. Well, it's glad to know that you're a friend. We're going to go off now and organize our interactions with the bandits, and we'll be back soon. We'll be waiting. We are not going anywhere. So I'll turn tail and saunter off into the forest. So rendezvous with Fluff again. Was it a complete waste of time, as I expected? Well, I wouldn't say a complete waste of time. They're not going to get in our way. Mm, they work for the cats. We shouldn't trust them. You'd rather a dog that we can't trust? We had an understanding. <laughs> I understand. Are we still going with the dog plan? Are we still going with the dog plan? We are going to do the Yes, dog, we're still we? going with the... Oh, yes, the dog plan. Um, the, the, the cat said that he can organize a pardon for the dog if that makes dealing with the dog any easier. Hmm. Well... What did you I promise really, I, I, I just used my charisma and my uh, common sense and my rapport one-to-one -one with all the creatures of the forest. But maybe a pod would help too. What? So you got taken for all you had? Half of what I had. Did you tell him what half would be? Honestly, right at the moment, right then, I couldn't even remember. <laughs> but look, I got the job done. Well, no, that. So your limited capacity in that manner may prove helpful. If we show up with the, to the cats and get paid a few pennies, and then he gets a few pennies, he got half, as far as he knows. That's exactly what I was thinking. That was the entire plan. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah. 
So what's your plan with the doc? We are going to meet him uh, at dusk and he's going to show us the way to the red... What's his face? Okay. That's the entirety of the plan. So far, but if I would have been planning more if you guys hadn't come along and disturbed me, I had it all worked out. Yeah, I could see those two nuts that you call a brain clinking together to try and figure something out. Yeah, there were mushrooms involved and everything. Two nuts and a mushroom. You're really coming along far. Look, are we are we a team or are we not a team? Because I can go off my own again. Seems like I got more done than you guys have done since you've been here. Hey, we found a bear. Yeah, great job I found there. a pretty locket. Why do you think I'm hiding at the top of the tree? A locket. Oh, yeah, in the bear's house. I'll show you the locket. Ooh. It's very fancy. Did you say it had a cat's uh, emblem on? Yeah, it has the symbol of the Marquisad, also uh, the sigil of one of the noble houses of the Marquisad, and the portrait of a fancy cat inside. <laughs> I love the idea of a cat portrait on the inside, <laughs> like painted. <laughs> uh, do I recognize this particular noble house? I'll say that uh, they seem familiar. You have seen their banners around. You saw the same symbol uh, on Underleaf. But uh, the name of the house and what the, the symbol means and whatnot escapes you at the moment but you know that they are one of the uh, uh, the aristocratic cats around the place it's not the the banner in the camp is it no okay. that is just the normal bark is one okay interesting trinket you where did you say you found it in the bear's house yeah in the bear's house maybe that bear has a healthy appetite for cats now, I promised them that I wouldn't bring the bear here. Do you want a job doing? <sighs> okay. Yeah, but if we've got a way around the camp, we don't need to worry about getting rid of the camp, do we? It wouldn't do to upset our current employer. Oh, you're here too. Hi. <laughs> I'm just imagining uh, I, that, like, I'm I'm on the ground, you're in the tree, and then Connor <laughs> is in the air. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Connor just comes to perch uh, just above. Off. Mwah! I wish you wouldn't do that. Okay, well, I suppose one dastardly enemy at a time. Since we've now got three on the list, right? If we include the bear. Mm, well, <clears throat> the, we can just hope that the bear does not uh, become a problem. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I hope it doesn't become a problem. Although, it could be a useful uh, way of getting out of trouble. Whether we bring the bear in for chaos, or we run towards the bear for cover I'll be staying up in this tree well where were you meeting up. the dog um unfortunately on the ground just over there okay is there anything else you want to do before we meet the dog Uh, well, 
we should probably talk through our plan. So I'll be in charge. You guys are just like my 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 kind of wingmen. And uh, and oh, I mentioned that we have a large uh, collection of crows and other animals following us round. So if you could go along with that as well, and um, yeah. Uh, I should scout the meeting point to make sure that he hasn't brought any friends of his own. Well, I was going to suggest that too. Sure, sure, sure. Of course you were. So do you want to fast forward to that scene or do you do anything before? Hmm. No, I don't think we have anything else that we want to do. Well, I don't at least. No, I'm good. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with Connor. To you see the you see the dog Reef getting to to the appointed place, and uh, you immediately can see that uh, he reinforced the padding on his armor, and he's clearly ready for trouble. So do you want to read this tense situation? or figure them out. I think I want to figure them out. OK, so let's see what you get from scouting them ahead. All right, my charm is, oh, uh, one, right. I always have trouble reading the stats. Yeah, me too. Eight. So I can ask one. What does your character intend to do? Uh, the dog is expecting to be ambushed and is expecting to have to fight you. He does not fully trust Fluff. Fluff forgot to mention that he only got seven to nine on the roll. Okay. <clears throat> I'll fly back and uh, report what I found. <clears throat> so, again, I perch, uh, I perch uh, above wherever Fluff is uh, uh, Clinging to. Hooah! It seems your friend doesn't trust you. Well, I mean, uh, well, he doesn't maybe trust me yet. I think despite Fluff's bravado, he's not completely dumb and he realizes that probably uh, Nail is going to be better at this kind of persuasion job than he is. He just doesn't want to completely admit that. I didn't see anybody else around the area, but uh, he is prepared for trouble. So. Well, I mean, so are we, right? I, I just blink at you. <laughs> Maybe swivel ahead a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we should get going. And I um, shoulder my longbow and put my sword in its sheath. So you approach the, the place and you see Reef in a defensive stance as he looks at Fluff. So are you not missing a couple of crows? I only see an old owl. Uh, um, well, we don't. We don't Connor's, want to not, Connor's not <laughs> reviewing himself, but he will maybe make uh, fluttering noises and try try to make himself seem like uh, more people than he actually is. Okay. How about Nail? Where's Nail? I think Nail's with you, um, and I'm going to say, well, yes, the crows are coming, but you're showing us where we're going first, and then they're going to sweep in. 
Exactly, exactly. I mean, we don't want to. You, we didn't want to uh, to make too much of a show right at the start. So uh, I've arranged for our friends to. Uh, you see, yeah, all makes sense. Hmm. I see. So, are you ready to meet the great hero of the revolution? I mean, okay. Uh, are we? Are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Are you sure the four of us can take the red robin? Don't seem very confident. I just told you that it's not the four of us. Okay, okay. Tell your people to follow us. Fluff uh, does some very unconvincing kind of uh, fake hand movements as if signaling to various people all around. I... And then says, they're on board. Let's go. So... Light starts to redden and fail as Reef takes you around the camp and towards uh, what seems to be an old tower that seems to have crumbled. Uh, and it's a really old uh, tower. You cannot even imagine who built it. And next to the tower, there seems to be a mound. And someone has been dagging in it inside out recently well that's it dread robin nests inside an old grave this is the meeting place this is where he takes the people that uh, you know the marks we take them here we make a big scene about this being a secret base of the rebellion and we send them back to get more recruits and to pay them up this is it this is the center of the operation and he's he's here now oh he's here now i know that he's meeting someone um okay okay then I'm um, out of character. This is very stupid, but I've only just realized that Red Robin is probably actually a Red Robin. I've just been imagining him as like a code name, but of course it's probably a bird, isn't it? <laughs> That's what you might be led to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking around for any signs of uh, anybody else guarding the area or anything. Uh, anything that could be a problem. Okay, so figure a ten situation then. And there it is. It's a five. Oops. I'm sure it'll be fine. You get a shiver down the spine as you start to get to uh, recollection of these planes. This is an ancient grave of the, the ancient dynasts of the Erie. The people that uh, that were vanquished on the last civil war that their rulers they they were buried in in barrels like this and you know that there are rumors that uh, they never left and that during nights of full moon like this one you can still hear the fluttering of their wings as as well as the the whistling of the cold night hair through their spectral bones as they take flight and you're pretty sure that there is no way that a place like this especially if they're being desecrated no way that it's not haunted 
Okay, so Connor's head does uh, swivel a bit as you know, he's sort of <laughs> looking over his sh- shoulders, and uh, <clears throat> his his feathers ruffle a little, uh, and then he sort of straightens himself up and puffs out his chest like, "This is fine." Looks kind of creepy. You know, if this is where this leader of the revolution hangs out, I'm really worried about the revolution. This is a creepy place. Uh, are we sure it's a Robin? Or is he just Grave Robin? Well, are we doing this or what? I'd rather not stand around here as any longer than we have to. Well, come on. I'm going to walk forward, peer in. Mm-hmm. I'll um, try to prod Riff to go a bit further, but I'm guessing he isn't so keen. I don't know. If you probe him, say, so what is the plan? Do I present you as people that want to join the revolution? Or do I say that you are prisoners? Or do you want to be the the mushroom seller? Who is it? Ah, yeah. Well, um, um, uh, I've uh, I've briefed Nail on the next part of the plan, so uh, so he'll uh, he'll be taking the lead from here, under my supervision, of course. Yes, the briefing was extensive. Mm. Told you. So I we- think for now, we. Just introduce us as though we're new recruits. We have more plans if things go awry. Oh, that's a good. You do seem more like recruits than anything else. Ah, uh, cheeky. Well, the better lie is the one that has some truth to it. So you descend into the barrel. And Connor, uh, standing beside you, there are row and row of uh, of ancient eerie warriors, still their brittle bones, still wearing the ancient armor of those old days. How did ancient uh, eerie armor look like? Uh, I think it uh, looked very... Uh, sort of reminiscent of samurai armor, like uh, you, you can see this, like uh, you know, it's, it's almost it's almost got like a scale sort of look to it, but uh, instead of scales, the sca- uh, it's like uh, shaped like feathers. And now, uh, there is some impressive and clever uh, construction on the biggest hall that as soon as you leave the main corridor and you enter the big chamber, you immediately notice. What is impressive to you about this uh, construction? So it's impressive mostly because it's it, it's uh, it seems innocuous. There's uh, a chandelier hanging from the ceiling, um, but uh, I only notice because there's the ropes that hang from the ceiling then go out to the side, and there's gears over there, and it looks like the any visitors stand directly under the chandelier, which is fairly high up. And there's a button close to the throne. Uh, well, not you know the area that the the, the robin's standing, um, 
where he can just press a button and the, the chandelier will fall. Uh, and Fluff. The, the red robin is flanked by two lieutenants. How do you know which one is the one that is on on the duty of handling troublemakers and let's say assassinations oh because uh i know him i've met him before so when the um cats took over the my home clearing their soldiers were also helped by a couple of mercenaries um, and there was one particularly uh, vicious mercenary uh, let's say weasel who um, whose reputation preceded him and he was kind of brutal and was striding through the villages uh, dispatching civilians and cutting people down uh, and I recognize him he's older much older now has a gray streak in his fur, but it's the same guy. So there seems to be 10 farmers and craftsperson, all mice that they seem to be gathered. And there is indeed a Robin wearing a red cloak standing on uh, in front of the uh, on, on front of the stone grave uh, and flank to to them that is indeed this easel mercenary on the left side watching carefully to see if there is anything weird with the mice and handling the talk and the papers as both the robin and the weasel are silent there seems to be uh a bespeckled mouse that uh, seems to be going around to details about shipments and uh, recruitment and trading regimes and whatnot. And how many people in total did you say? Uh, ten uh, craftsmen and farmers, all mice. Okay. I think. Fluff will kind of nudge, uh, nail, and whisper that, watch out for the weasel. Okay, I'm watching out for everyone. Even better. I'm just... Uh... Keep looking around to see the what how everybody's armed and just sizing people up. Are you trying to get anything in particular? Then? Uh, I may be reading a tense situation. Okay, go for it. All right. Okay, that is uh, nine. So, uh, What's uh, who or what is most vulnerable to me? Hmm. You think that you could handle the robin and the mice easily? Uh, the only one that really seems to be a significant danger to you is the weasel. Okay. So, uh, Fluff, do you think that the weasel would recognize you? No, I was a, a kid, and he didn't care. I was just someone. I mean, he's, it's one of the situations where I think I always remember his face, but he didn't look twice at me. 
And do you think that you could, you have learned something about them in the meantime? My, yeah, my, well, my recollection is that he's just cold and vicious. So he won't hesitate. There's no point in trying to negotiate. He's paid there simply to, to kill threats, and that's what he'll do. I think Fluff is obviously nervous. Like the, the others that know him will will realize that there's mm -hmm. something with the weasel, and that the, you know, there's some history there for sure. Yeah, and if he's looking at you to see uh, to see what uh, what is the next step that you want to take. If you should introduce you or just mm -hmm. keep you waiting in the ale. Uh, let's um, let's uh, let's not interrupt this mouse who's who's reading out this information. But uh, at the next suitable juncture, maybe Fluff will will elbow Reef to do his thing. So the things continue for a while, and the, the mouse seems to be droning on and going on about uh, what they should do, what they sh can help for the cause. Uh, and the Red Robin seems intensely bored. And he seems to be looking in your direction more out of curiosity than anything else. And mm -hmm. Riv makes a motion for you to join the mice. Can we do this without standing underneath the chandelier? Yes, you can. What do you reckon, guys? Just talk to him first. All right, let's do it. Go on, Reef. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> Boss, we have a few more people that would like to would like to join. And the the mouse seems excited at the prospect of starting from the beginning. And the Red Robin just gives a stare of sheer horror that he will have to listen to this anyway. Oh, well, it's always nice to see some people that have been awakened by the flames of rebellion. Tell me, was it the cats or the birds that caused you this much suffering? Honestly, it was neither. Uh, I, uh, I ran into my good friend Riff here, and his armor, his all of his uh, equipment seemed absolutely horrendous, and I thought, there's a way that I could make some coin. I could uh, help out this uh, organization and get some decent equipment on the go. Hmm. Is that the case, Riff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, of course. Uh... Yeah, so how about that? Uh, I'm sure you can check that, right? And the mice seems a bit suspicious. And he, put, he puts his, guy, uh, his glasses up. Hmm. Where did you meet, Riff? Well, I don't want to get my good friend in trouble, but he was at the bar. The bar? Where? In town. The mouse turns to the weasel and with only the barest of nods, 
uh, the weasel approaches Reef, and you can see Reef shaking in fear. And the weasel just says, open your mouth. Fluff is feeling guilty, but is too scared to intervene. And Reef opens the mouth and says, I have not been drinking. That's even worse, the weasel says, because if you did not went into town for drinking, you went for talking. Uh, um. Actually, he um, he wasn't drinking; he was eating. I'm gonna tell you, the weasel is going to uh, to kill Riff if uh, you don't convince them otherwise. Uh, he, had, he had a mushroom stew. All right. Well, I'm going to let these guys try to talk out their way out of that, and then if it looks like the the dog's about to get killed, I am going to step in. Seriously, mate, he he was saying that the, the food around camp was horrendous, uh, and so he, he snuck into town to get a decent meal. He had mushrooms. Can't you smell that in his breath? Okay, uh, are you trying to persuade or trick them? Well, I mean, he did just have mushrooms. That's so, true. I suppose, persuade. Yeah, that part is not the problem, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm not actually true. Oh, oh, I don't know. Let's, well, let's go trick. To, yeah, okay, go for it. I just realized just how bad this entire party is at um at convincing anyone of anything. Mm. Eight with my minus one is seven. Okay, uh, do you uh, do any of well, unless okay, do, does, does any of you uh, what is the connection? The one that you get to spend twice is ocean. Does anyone have it with the, uh, with nail? I think it's friends. No. Uh, protector and partner. Yeah, so even if you spend the exhaustion, you cannot bump it to a 10. So. <sighs> which is not fitting. So. They seem to hesitate at this and say well he may not have been doing something wrong but uh, he was not supposed to go into town it's too risky uh we send one of our best people there and last night and they still have not returned so reef how about you wait outside because i need to have a word with you later and Reef almost races out of the of the chamber. Oh, sorry, Reef. Now I'm real sorry if he did something that he wasn't meant to, but he didn't say anything about nothing. I pried it out of him once we got out of the camp. Oh, let's get out of town. Well, that's good, and now and the weasel sits back and. The red Robin coughs and uh, addresses you. So, what can you offer to our cause? And why would not we take a break now? In, and in five minutes, and we're gonna see how do you plan to offer your swords to him? Seeing five. Okay. Point first. Huh? Point first. Point what? How, how do we want to offer a source to him? Point first? Yeah, exactly.
All right. So the Robin wearing the red cloak asks you how you might serve the cause. Can I ask, is it at all possible for Fluff to have kind of slunk back into the shadows during this conversation, or is that impossible? I'd like to try and sneak around to a better position, but only if I can do it unseen. Uh, you can do it on the scene. I mean, there is, after all, a lot of people around the room. So what is the kind of position which you want to, to achieve? Behind the robin, if that's possible. Basically, if it all goes wrong, I'd like to be able to to be able to step forward and have a knife to his throat. Or I suppose a long sword to his throat. Do you have any move that might be particularly useful for this? Um, this side. Yes, well, so I can, so if it's a roguish feat, then I can attempt a roguish feat, but I have silent pause, which means that I can mark exhaustion to choose one fewer item from the list when I do it. And I, then I, also the darkened blade, if need be, to actually do the, do the kill. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Okay, let's do this with the trust fate first. Because it is not a question if you can do it, it's more uh, and not a question of what you leave behind, it's more a question if you are, are able to get a good enough position. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm going to roll, and I have an eight plus one nine. Yeah, so you can get a good position to strike the red robin but you're gonna have to leave yourself exposed to someone who if you move to strike mm -hmm. the red robin from where you are someone else will be able to strike you at the same time who is it, it of course it is the weasel <laughs> because the weasel is looking out it has to be right yeah makes sense so what? Well, so I haven't been seen yet, but if I if I make a move, then he will he'll know. Oh, you are probably seen, uh, uh, but uh, you were seen. Uh, how to say? This is a question where you are positioned on the room, rather than, uh, and basically you you are on a position where you can immediately hide, and before they get. To, to notice that you are gone to make the jump. I see. So it's, it's not like you are, you are still, you basically, you know, you put yourself on a position where you can get to the top, to the shadows, and from the shadows, get immediately to the red robin. So okay, good. That's why I asked, uh, uh, that's why I asked this, because you need to be able to get in that position to maneuver and not cut, uh, not be noticed that this is way too convenient a site for you to stand. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, so, so I think to do that, but you know the kind of um, cartoon over the top looking innocent. So like walking along with my hands behind my back, looking into the air, like whistling under my breath, like <laughs> uh, very innocently moving into position. And I'll let Nail do the talking because he's much better at it than me. So, Mr. Robin, I'm here with my hammer, ready to bash out some wonderful weapons. This here is my my bodyguard. Uh, and if if the fact that I'm a simple blacksmith who needs a bodyguard, that, that's just proof of how good I am. Uh, 
Well, that is indeed the point, but we don't have much of a smithy. So perhaps you should do better if you, you know, if you manage to get a job in town and send us some of your earnings. Oh, no, I've got the smithy. I'm offering to provide you with high quality swords at a discounted rate. And there seems to be a lot of excitement from the mice around. Well, that's delightful. So we told you need to start working immediately. Well, I really just needed to uh, touch base with you to make sure that uh, I knew where you were. Uh, is this where you will be for the foreseeable future? I need to know where to send the swords, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, you can... Uh, you can send this or you can uh, or you can tell Sonia to handle it and he looks to the weasel and the, the mouse and they just shake their hands like yeah if Sonia is not back they probably either deserted us or are dead like well uh you're gonna have to to ask here with Flint then and he points to the weasel Flint, is it? Yes, that's what they call me now. Is that because you have such an explosive personality? <laughs> Those that survive after seeing me fight will agree with you. I see. <laughs> In that case, I shall not be fighting you in any case. But, <laughs> but, um, so you're to be my liaison then? Well, something like weapons is going to carry a lot of heat. So someone like me should be on top of you. And the mouse adjusts his glasses and says, I have some questions, if you will not mind. Like sweet. Sure. What questions could you possibly have for someone of my caliber? Well, for example, how are you getting the metal under martial law? Well, I do a lot of trade with um, with uh, people in the area, so I always need lots of bits of metal and bits and pieces of everything, and so. I've found it useful to get metal for that, that seems to be for other reasons and then cobble it together into a fantastic sword. Hmm. And you don't leave a paper trail. No, as I say, most of the time if I'm doing jobs like this for uh, mostly reputable sources, I'll um I'll just happen to to order a little extra metal when I do get some, and so oh I, that just goes into my personal stash, which I use for for fixing up my own implementation. Hmm. And how do you keep guards from, let's say, doing surprise inspections on your business? Do you have some sort of arrangement? Well, I'm usually the one who uh, maintains their equipment, so they don't like upsetting me at all. I see, I see. And the mouse turns to the robin and waves, and the red robin goes home. <laughs> all right, then, it seems everything is in order. Uh, uh, what we can do for you, then? Well, uh, I suppose the, the real question is, uh, where do I send the swords? And how do you plan on paying for them? Paying? Huh. I thought you were doing this for the revolution. I am, but I still need to cover my costs. I said I'd give you a discounted rate. I didn't say they'd be free. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair, I guess. Um... But I would like someone to give then an appraise of your material. 
first. You will understand, right? I would sure. understand. I don't have anything on hand. Ah, I'm sure that uh, Flint here could go with you mm. and check your workshop. So uh, we, we established that uh, Connor uh, knows Neil because Neil has maintained their gear. So maybe Connor has something on him that he can provide as a sample. That's true. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So what do you show them, Connor? Uh, I will show them uh, a dagger, which I don't actually have in my equipment, but we can maybe mark something off on my decay. Yeah, you mark decay and you say that you have a dagger. Right. Okay, just where is the key? Okay, uh, mark that. I think I may have actually marked something in fluffs by accident earlier, so I'll unmark that. Ah, uh, oh yeah, thank you. So I am on one decay left, so. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, I, I slowly, like, uh, move to, you know, so, so that they know I'm not making for an attack, I will slowly reach into my coat and pull out uh, the dagger and uh, offer it help first. Hmm. This is quite intricate work. I mean, yeah. And you will say that you could get something like this done easily? Easily enough. Not necessarily that that's not the cheapest work that I've done. And uh, it may take some time. As you say, we're under martial law. Metal is hard to come by, so it'll take a bit of extra time. But I could definitely get some more of these. Uh, the red robin looks around and uh, shows the dagger and the, the mice seem to be quite excited. And you can see that he's already using the promise of uh, good equipment as something that their donations will help by for him to play up the mark. All right, so is that all? It would seem so. You still haven't told me how you're going to pay me, though. Oh, that will be with these good people. They will help me pay it. Is not that right? Then the mice seem quite pleased, and a few of them approach you. I want to visit your shop. I want to get one of these of my own. Well, if this is uh, if this is going to work, then I can't have anybody visiting my shop. As you say, the guards are always watching. Yes, yes. Just you know, they are eager to do their part. Just well, don't. I'll make sure I throw in a few extra for them. And they seem really excited. So. Are Fluff and our corner making any moves? Well, do we? Is it this seems like more useful than the original plan that Fluff had, which was to wait till the appropriate moment and then just kill everybody? Uh, because this way we can kind of infiltrate the whole organization. So I think Fluff's. Hand has been kind of hovering near the hilt of his sword, and then as the conversation's gone on, he's just been like, da, 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 da. Perhaps I'll call out and say, Hey, you can stand down, Fluff. It all went well. <laughs> what, 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 I was just looking at the, 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 the paintwork. 
I hope you'll so, forgive me, bit, Robin, but uh, you, you can never be too too careful. Yeah, I understand. I will not. Uh, that's how I know that I can trust you for this revolution. After all, if you were not careful, you will be a liability. And the Robin and the mouse, they seem to stay behind as Flint and the mice seem to be making their exit. And Flint seems to be going straight for a reef. So what do the three of you do? For reef. Well, I suppose our business is done. Shall we go back to the workshop? Just, um, just, just give me a moment. And Fluff um, follows Flint out in the direction of Reef, and kind of gathering up all his. Uh, I think the cat muted you. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. That happened before. Sorry. Uh, yes, um, Fluff is going after uh, Flint and will kind of, with all his courage, tug on his fur to try and get his attention before he gets to Reef. What is it? Well, um, uh, uh, I don't want to, um, I don't want to cause any trouble, but, uh, but uh, you should know that the, 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 this dog is, uh, has been extremely loyal to the cause. And in fact, in fact, um, in fact, it was his idea. It was his idea when he saw the quality of, of my friend's work, it was his idea that would be useful to the, to the rebellion. So, um, so, uh, so be nice to him. But what the, if you were working for the Yuri, I heard your friend. He says that he does maintenance for the weapons of the Eerie. How did he know? How could he be sure? He, uh, he, um, well, he, uh, well, he, he, he used to work for the Eerie himself before he joined the rebellion. So, uh, so that's why they have a contact here. And they narrowed their eyes. Hmm. I see. Well, I hope to see you around. Likewise. And he just gives uh, a few curt words towards Reef and then retreats, guiding the farmers back to the clearing. And Drif is drenched in sweat. I suppose I go up to Reef and say, uh, well, that went rather well, didn't it? Thanks for your help there. <sighs> well, I don't know why I thought that you will be a better liar than you were with me, or to be honest. Remind me to never put my life in your words again. I, I, I thought we had it all worked out. You saw, you heard what I said there to that, to that weasel fellow, and uh, it seems like it's all worked out well. You would have so been in trouble saw, without me. So you saw how the operation works. What is your opinion now that you have seen it? Uh, I, um, <laughs> I think Fluff still isn't quite sure how much to, tr like, he's obviously genuine, but I don't know what he'll think when he wakes up tomorrow morning. And, um, uh, I, 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 I will discuss with, with my comrades, but, uh, I hope we can rely on you as a, as, uh, a trustworthy contact. This is getting too too hot for me. I was hoping that uh, 
I could make my exit now. So you're counting to teach me here. That was not the deal that we had. Well, that's true, but but um, but actually, we so I mean, yeah, we could, yeah, I mean, we could, we could, we could end our arrangement here for sure. That is what we agreed, but but I have a new proposal for you. What if we could secure for you when all this is over, when the rebellion has been taken apart by our soldiers and so on? What if we could secure for you? a full pardon for your involvement. Hmm. That sounds good. So the only thing I need to make sure is that I'm not killed by either your forces or by Flint. Yeah. Can I say that we then come out around now? Please, please do. <laughs> ah. Riff, Fluff, how did it all go? Uh, we're all still alive? Well, so that, that Flint fella didn't, didn't carve you up at all? I had a few stern words and uh, he understood. Oh, you didn't talk to him again, did you? He's gone. You underestimate me. Hmm. Uh, now, Riff, are we going to be able to trust you going forward into the future? That's the real question, isn't it? Uh, so uh, Connor uh, makes himself look bigger uh, to back up that statement. Puffs up his feathers. Well, what now? Well, <clears throat> so do we get our friends in the camp to come here? Yeah, that's what I was starting to think. Mm. I mean, they were concerned they wouldn't find the Robin. Mm. But, yeah, Found so him. we can we can tell tell them where they are, and uh, they can provide backup for us when we go in. Yeah. How much do we trust these guys? Both, I mean, the other camp, both their intentions and their competence uh, not very much of either oh good okay then fine let's do it so we're going to leave and go back to the the cat camp mm -hmm. i wonder if there's any way i think probably as we're walking back to the cat camp fluff will will be looking pensive and will say, you know, I've been thinking about Riff. I would feel bad if anything were to happen to him. Do you think there's any way we can kind of get him out of harm's way before the big fight? Sure. Well, you know, he, if you if he were to come with us now, he could get his pardon straight away and, and get out of here. And then he wouldn't be in the way, and he wouldn't be able to give us up to the to the Robin. That's true. Where did he go? Um, I don't know. Leo, is Riff still around? Uh, he's going to be around there until you leave for the cat part. He's not going to go for you with the cats. So if you want to talk before leaving, yeah, he'll still be around. Did you tell him about the pardon? I did. What did you tell him? 
I told him that I had, that you had, that you had uh, arranged uh, a pardon for him so that when all the fighting was over, he would be able to go free. Well, I'm going to wander over to Riff and say, hey, Riff. I don't know you, really. And you really don't know me. But I'm not sure what you want to do. So I'll lay it all out on the table right now. You can hang around and give us a hand and we will share our profits. And we will get you a lovely little life. Or you can come back with us now. You'll get no money. But we can get you a pardon and get you out of the trouble. Well, I'm halfway now. There's no turning back. So I guess I'm as doomed as you are. So what the hell? Wonderful. So all it really takes then is once you see us and our friends start to arrive, just sow some chaos in the, the main camp and give us some time to to finish off what we got to do here. If we're successful, then we'll come give you back up and we'll scatter the entire mob. If we're not successful, you can act as though you were just drunk and stupid. Maybe get a little bit of a you know, a beating for being drunk and stupid, but you won't be dead. Hmm. I can maybe, you know, I can maybe sell the lie that they went to check your works workshop and use that as an excuse to not be here when the things happen. Seems to be the safest. Of course, that means you don't have backup. No, I mean go back to the guard camp and create some chaos there when we come in here so that they're not there to give the the Robin is back up. Hmm. Well, your owl seems to know their way around the fight. What is their suggestion? I suggest you head back to your uh, the bandit camp and uh, buy his time there. Well, if I'm going to be on the camp, I should give you a sign. Or at least a way that, uh, mm -hmm. that you know that I can be recognized by your people. Uh, just for curiosity... Those pardons, can they be extended to other people? Because maybe I can turn a few couple people around, if that is the case. Well, we can have a chat. I can't promise anything, but I, I'm sure that if they're willing to give up the cause of the, re of the revolution, they'll be more than happy to, to have less people to fight against. Because of the revolution. <laughs> uh, you mean uh, the con. No, I don't count that uh, whoever you work for is going to be merciful for the true believers. After all, those are the real danger, are not they? Okay, okay. So I'll send you a sign now. Uh, how about uh, I lit a torch on the place where we have been meeting? when it's the right time to attack sounds good sounds perfect i only want one thing get flint off my ass if you see him after me okay i mean you saw how i dealt with him last time right no problem <laughs> you so, really dealt with him so where are you guys going now? 
so we'll head back to the the cat camp. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you get to the camp and you see the lieutenant running uh, his people for uh, running her people for some exercises, and Lieutenant Scruffles just stares at you down. Well, you look uh, successful or at least alive. So we have a chance. If you still wanted to give us a hand and crush this for Ellen. Look, I don't know what Perry told you when he hired you, but my purpose here is not to crush a rebellion. The, we are here for justice. Every single person here, they are now a devoted loyal of the uh, servant of the Marquisette, but they too were tempted by the romantics illusions about the insurgency. And whatever little they had, it was taken from them. That is what we are here for. We are not interested in uh, punishing anyone but the Red Robin. And I don't see a problem. We know where yeah. the Red Robin is. We can tell you. You can help us take him down. That's great. I just want to be clear that uh, we are on, this, on the same plan. That we know what each of us wants from this situation. And afterwards, when we dismantle the Red Robin's empire, you will be able to take back what's rightfully yours. I doubt that uh, people that run these kinds of cons, they usually spend this money, the money that they earn it to just increase the size of the con. But that would be great. Maybe that's what Perry had in mind. Uh, that's exactly what he had in mind. Well, he would have known you're in the area. Yeah. Well... He has interest on that. After all, it's his skin on the game if taxation comes and the clearing is the, the present and there is no money to show for it. So, well, anyway, it's your contract with him. I am thankful if you're gonna give me the chance to get the Red Robin himself. So, where is no, there's it? Just, there's just one detail that uh, we need to get cleared up. You oh. offered us one pardon. We might need a few more. How many more? Not sure. But our friend in the camp is going to convince everyone to turn tail against the Robin. Everyone that can. Everyone that's just there for the money anyway. Well, I think I can get one or two for sure. More might need a bit greasing hands. But at the very least, I can promise that uh, they will not be executed. That we can make sure. We can sure find another way for them to serve for their client, crimes. Maybe indentured service to the very farmers that uh, they harm. That might be very popular with the troops here. I'm not about to say no to such good ideas. Mm. So, this is the plan. Our friend in the camp is going to light a torch once the uh, the guard camp is suitably prepared to not come and help the Robin. Me and you and my good friend Al here and my good friend Fluff here. And any good soldiers you can spare. We will charge in. 
we will take out the Robin, and he's got two lieutenants with him. No bloodshed of your troops needs to be done. Just quick kill, in and out, and then you're avenged. Everything's happy. So uh, she seems to be toying with uh, with the scar over her missing eye. As if this seems way too good to be true. What is the catch? Have you heard of a man, a weasel, called Flint? A mercenary? That's the one. Oh. Well, there goes what I meant about them spending money to expand the section. If they got the, the Flint squadron, we are in for some trouble. Was Flint alone? He was. He probably is not alone. Yeah, I'm not sure we know that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You need to make sure that Flint does not get his crew because honestly, if he gets his little band, I don't think any of us will make out of there. Don't you worry. I'll handle Flint, you handle the Red Robin. We have a score to settle. Sounds great. Well, that is all that you ask of me, is it? Yeah, just back up. All right, we will be ready. We can buy you some time. We can maybe even scare off uh, the Flint's company if, in case they are not aware of what is happening, they just see our banners. You can count, count on us. After all, you have done us a great service. Wonderful. Now, to grease the wheels and get us in the door, do you have a couple of spare swords and an anvil? <laughs> Funny thing you say. Uh, I only have one sword in the entire camp. Look around. These are just militia. They have their farming tools and the spears that we issue to the front lines. I don't think we have much metal at all. Well, I didn't want to have to travel all the way home to get this deal through. Well, maybe it's better than that you don't make this deal. Just get this done. What do you reckon, Fluff? Connor? Do you reckon we can get back in the door if we don't have a pile of swords? I think they'll definitely question that. I expect I can attempt a roguish feat or two. Well, we don't have metal, but we have a lot of cards. And uh, Scruffles looks around to, to one of those cards. And they are full of bags. I'm pretty sure that uh, a lumpy beads, a few sticks, a few spear handles, and at least until inspection, it can, they can very well be filled with swords. You know what? That'll do. That is a flawless plan. I see no problems with this. What can go wrong? So it's a so deal. I, yeah, I think we're going to load up a cart with a couple of bundles of bags. I'll wait for that torch. And the torch comes. It is the moment. What are your final preparations? Well, Connor, did you want to 
fly up and uh, check out to see if everything is as we expect. Yeah, I think Connor will do some uh, uh, last minute scout in the area. And I think we'll load up our, ba our bags and cart and start heading out. Um, are there any other soldiers or any anything coming with us? I would say there's actually four of them that are in the cart. <laughs> like hiding in the bags. Yeah. <laughs> a few mice that are ready to spring in case things take a turn to the worst. So I think we are going to end on Connor's scouting. So why don't you check uh, uh, the thing situation? Okay. Uh, so coming again. It's uh, four. You see the torch, and you see a trail of blood, and you see Reef laying in a puddle of his own blood, and then you see the camp, and it was a massacre. And the last time, the last thing that you see is a massive black shape amidst the corpses. And we get here. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. It's throwing the bear trap a bit too early. Okay, let's do a quick stars and wishes. Do we? Stars. Star to Richard for the fun um, repartee. <laughs> it's a shame we didn't get into that in the first session, but I'm really glad we did this time. Uh, and uh, wish that I could be in the next session. Richard? Um, I want to say stars to Connor. Uh, I, I got the impression that he he may not have had a lot to say, but he he made more roles than anyone else, I think. He, he's always had an eye on the situation, always had his, his finger on the pulse. And wishes? I, I wish this goes well. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, star to Toby. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy Fluff uh, uh, being a fast talker, but not being very good at it. Uh, uh, you, uh, and uh, wish uh, uh, to get 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 some fighting. Uh, next session because that's what my character is for <laughs> mostly oh yeah there's no way of getting around fighting next time to be honest uh you y'all did so well this time i was like oh god this can go so wrong so many times and that's my biggest star is that how you got through this bold daring plan that had barely scrapped together but just on guts and uh, personality alone, you got to it, and how everyone was true to their characters through it. Uh, a big star for Toby, because, yeah, uh, I think we really got fluffed this session. We did not get many opportunities to see them shine. I mean, we saw the effects of their actions, but uh, now we actually get, got a pretty idea what is going inside Fluff's head. Uh, and Nail was amazing this session. Uh, the, the diplomacy of Nail was on point. And uh, 
uh, it was really nice to see which angles they will be able to attack. And Connor being the tired voice of reason on this mess of a plan was really delightful. And a big star for I I was not on my big game this session and but uh, because you keep giving me these hooks to go around it was really nice to cobble everything together and wishes ah, yeah i kind of want to see how a fight with a bear goes because i only fought a bear once on this game and it was a tpk so let's see <laughs> <laughs> okay mm. Okay, so thanks everyone. Uh, are you okay if I upload this? Yep. Please do. Okay. See you all. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.